The fourth lesson of Unit 1 addresses the question, what were the British origins of American constitutionalism? The text describes briefly the beginnings of English government. What lessons do you think we learn from that history? Well, at the risk of offending good British historians, uh, some quick observations. Tribal forms of government in England before 1066. William the Conqueror and his, as some texts refer to him, happy band of Normans, uh, won the Battle of Hastings, and William established himself as the king of the realm. This effort again to consolidate something that had been very disparate uh, before that uh, event. He quickly learned that he would have to defer to long-standing customs and traditions that were so deeply rooted in the various tribes and the various regions of the country. Simply cannot by fiat change hundreds and thousands of years of tradition. Mao Zedong learned that in the 1960s uh, with the cultural attempt at a cultural revolution in China. We continue to this day in the United States to struggle with the proper relationship between local governments, state governments, and the national government. Trying to establish uniform national rules in some areas of our public policy just isn't working. Early English monarchs attempted to perform all three of the governing functions that Aristotle described, making laws, executing laws, and judging those laws. But what they learned rather quickly is that they needed advisors and councils to help them. Those councils and advisors eventually developed into institutions of their own, both parliament and royal courts. Parliament eventually took on a representative role, giving voice to all three of the established English classes, the crown, nobles by birth, and commoners. And then Parliament eventually uh, further subdivided into a House of Commons and a House of Lords. Over time, a system of royal courts also emerged. But what's important about studying these institutions is we as Americans tend to impose on them this notion of three different branches performing three different functions. They weren't. Those three governing functions were very much blended in the British form. We're most familiar with the House of Lords also sitting as a judicial body. One of the things that colonists learned is that a way of limiting government is to take those governing functions and assign them to different institutions as a way of preventing anybody from exercising too much power. And so we see the early origins of separation of powers and, and checks and balances emerging from our study of uh, English history.